Hello and welcome to Swift Goose. Today we're going to look at how to use date and date interval as a follow-up to our recent date formatter video. So if you missed that one, you'll find a link in the description below. Let's get started by creating a date formatter variable. And we'll set our date formatter style for our date to be equal to medium. And same thing with our time style. So let's grab our date variable and we'll call it present and we'll set it equal to date and then we'll open parentheses. You'll see we have a couple different options here from time interval, time interval since 1970, since now and so on. But let's just close parentheses like this and that will give us a current date and current time exactly when this runs. We can grab a date in the past by calling date and we'll do time interval since and we'll put minus 3600. So this is in seconds, so this will take minus one hour. And the date that we're gonna subtract one hour from will be our present. And let's do the same thing for future. Additionally, we have some less commonly known options and probably less commonly used options as well. So let's say let distant past equals date dot. And we have a variable, if we scroll all the way down, we have distant future and distant past. And you'll see this does return a date. And now let's make one for distant future. For comparison, let's print all of these dates out with our date formatter. Date formatter dot string. And we're going to call from. And here we'll do distant past. Okay, now let's press shift command enter to run our code give us a little bit more space here. So first thing you'll notice is that distant past is December 31st, the year one, and distant future is the year 4000. And then just like we expected, our present time was 103357, and our past was one hour in the past, and our future was one hour in the future. And now let's look at using date interval. So let's set a new variable called interval equals date interval and we do have a couple options here. So if we open our parentheses up, you see we have our start and we can use a duration or we can use a start and an end. Duration gives us a time interval and then start end gives us two different dates. So just for now, we'll do this one with past. We'll put negative 7,200 for two hours and then we'll do another interval, date interval. And here we can do two different dates. So we have our past and our future. And since date interval itself returns an interval, our interval, if we print it out, we have a couple different options. We have our duration, our end, and our start. Okay, now if we run this code, and the reason we're getting an error here is because we're setting a date in the past and then we're subtracting even more time from it. So our duration, if we option click, duration has to be equal greater than zero. So let's just change this to be two hours in the future. And now let's run our code again. Okay, so we have our two different intervals, two hours in between, and then the duration is the same for both. That's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please hit the like button, subscribe, leave a comment, and hit the dinner bell to be notified of the next video. Thanks for watching.